Why do so many songwriters make incredibly good songs when they're young, but then write such disappointing work later in life? And at the other end, why is it practically unheard of for a young kid to make brilliantly crafted songs? The reason is that creativity is a process, rather than an innate character attribute. When we encounter beautiful works of art and clever inventions, it's easy to be so captivated as to forget that behind their creation is years of learning and tinkering, trying and failing. What may be innate is the creator's aesthetic sensitivity, her eye for style, but whether or not that tastefulness is a display of genius is merely a matter of opinion. There is a side to creativity that involves skill, and that skill is not innate, it is developed through a long process. One of the key attributes that leads to a better outcome in innovation is the ability to work through agonizing periods of uncertainty. Innovation happens more effectively when people work for longer at finding a solution. The need to appear quick-minded is the biggest killer of creativity. Those who are willing to tinker for longer are far more likely to produce a better outcome, all other conditions being equal. A creative process requires the willingness to switch between what are often referred to as the open state and the closed state. In the open state, the innovator is considering all options no matter how absurd. There are no boundaries set in the open state. This is the time for trial and error and a willingness to appear a little crazy. It is a time to let the mind roam freely before boundaries are selected to form the closed state. The narrowing of boundaries in the closed state is a necessary part of the process as it eases mental processing. For example, if members of a rock band have no idea what sort of vibe they're going for, it will be difficult for them to get anything out at all. It is important to form questions, function statements, etc. that set a clear guideline for the desired outcome. Otherwise, mental energy will be dissipated so much so that realistically the work will never be produced. Still, the function statement or questions posed should be left as open as possible in relation to the desired outcome to avoid prematurely constricting the options. In the lifespan of the innovator, the creative process flows through an apprenticeship phase, be it formal or informal, followed by a tinkering phase, then an incubation phase, and finally the insight comes. During the apprenticeship phase, the mind is primed for future innovation through the learning of skills and by developing a depth of understanding that allows the apprentice to navigate his field. He learns what has worked and what has not worked in that field. He learns which areas within that narrow field need solutions and thus finds areas within it to focus his energy on. By developing a unique range of skills, the apprentice is much more likely to produce unique solutions in his attempts to tackle problems. Typically, in both science and art, Innovations have been created through influence from other fields and, usually by mistake, through play. For example, Velcro was invented by George de Mestrel when he found he was getting cobbler's pegs stuck to his clothes while hiking. And in music, most fresh sounds are made by combining an unusual array of influences from different genres. It should be added also that unique situations and unique relationships between people are important factors that often lead to innovation by providing unusual input and thus leading to unique ideas. The apprenticeship phase is about learning skills through intensive immersion within a field. That expertise is then complemented by input from other learning, which usually occurs during leisure time. The apprenticeship phase forms the foundations for a productive tinkering phase. It is in the tinkering phase that a deeper exploration takes place. This is where the innovator is venturing into the great unknown as he follows his curiosity. Where in the apprenticeship phase, he was only venturing into territory that was unknown to himself. During the tinkering phase, he may be exploring what is unknown to humanity altogether. This requires a persistent acceptance of uncertainty. The innovator may ride with uncertainty in this way for years on end, before he has anything to show for the time he has invested in the pursuit. The need for certainty is what prevents most people from ever doing anything particularly innovated in their lifetimes, in any area of life. It seems we all have a deep fear of the unknown. But if we are to be innovative at all, we do need to take that plunge into the unknown. The need for certainty and to be doing what is already considered to be valid puts a closed door on innovation. During the tinkering phase, the innovator is not just tinkering physically with tools and works, but also mentally with his perception of the situation. By loosening up his perception of what he's dealing with, the tinkerer is able to open his mind to receiving a vast array of ideas from the unconscious. For example, an innovative guitarist may see her guitar as a block of wood with strings across it. This way of seeing it opens up her perception of what a guitar is, and how it could be played. 
In this way, the guitarist's perception of her instrument is freed from the constraints imposed by authority, knowledge and prestige. The tinkering stage is the time to become aware of those prematurely defined limitations lingering in the back of the mind. These are uncovered through a process of experimentation and self-questioning. The innovator provokes the arrival of new ideas and methods by turning things on their heads, playing with absurd possibilities and putting himself in strange situations. Even limitations themselves can lead to new possibilities. Some of the most unique music I've ever heard was created by people who refused to use anything but a single instrument to create an entire album. With limited resources, the innovator can be forced into a situation where he'll focus purely on the fundamental aim. This, in some cases, can lead to simpler and more effective ways of doing things than having limitless possibilities ever would have. In short, the tinkering phase of the creative process requires the courage to persevere through the discomfort of uncertainty and potential failure. The innovator plays at solving the problem in an interplay between the conscious and the unconscious mind. Finally, when his intellect is exhausted, he gives up. Then, usually without knowing it, he has entered the incubation phase of the creative process. Self-doubt is an important and inevitable part of the creative process. In the incubation phase, the innovator is coming to terms with this blow to his ego which he has just endured. He wonders about the worthiness of his work. He is likely questioning whether it was even a worthwhile task to pursue to begin with. Having been defeated by the task, the innovator will often take up something new or go on a holiday to ease the stress of having failed at something so core to his identity. Unbeknown to the innovator, however, the creative process is still continuing. His holiday is a part of the process itself. It's often said in creative fields, if you want to solve a problem, get it away from your heart. Desire distorts perception. Clinging too tightly to the aim, he cannot see the situation clearly. It's like looking at something with your eyes too close to it. Vision is obscured and the matter is not seen for what it is. From a further distance, however, the situation may be easier to navigate. And so, the intuitive leap may come when he least expects it, after he thought the task had been left to defeat. When the insight finally does come, there remains two pitfalls to be aware of. The first is that it may actually be wrong. Faraday, Huxley, Darwin, Planck, Einstein and Poincaré have all said that flashes of intuitive insight can sometimes be incorrect. Einstein himself claimed he had lost two years of hard work to a false inspiration. Even if the unconscious intelligence is unfathomably deep, I think it's important to remember that we're interpreting its expressions or signals with the very limited conscious mind as our receiver. The second pitfall is to believe that the insight is wrong or that it is invalid or too controversial to be accepted. In many situations, an innovation will appear to be so absurd that it will be disregarded by the innovator's peers or even by the innovator himself. One of the world's most esteemed scientists, V. S. Ramakundran, when questioned about the creative process he went through that led to unusual but effective treatments using mirrors to treat stroke sufferers and people with phantom limbs, responded by saying, I always tell my students, some of the most amazing discoveries have come from jokes. They started out as a joke. The very idea of a mirror to treat one-sixth of mankind? One-sixth of mankind suffers a stroke? It's so outrageous, people would just discard it for that reason. Another example is the famous story of the Hungarian doctor Ignaz Semwise. In 1846, he discovered that deaths due to purple fever could be dramatically reduced if the hospital staff would wash their hands before delivering babies. He was ridiculed by his peers. We now know how important his insight was. Want to learn more about the creative process? My book The Artist State of Mind is all about just that. The Artist State of Mind has received great reviews from experts in the fields of flow research and artistry. To purchase The Artist State of Mind, simply follow the link to the Amazon bookstore. Or, if you can't afford to buy anything right now, send me an email to let me know and I'll send you a free PDF copy of the book. In return, all I ask is that you hit like and subscribe below. This helps a lot in improving my ranking with the algorithm and allows me to reach far more people. Thanks for listening. I hope you find many useful insights in your copy of The Artist State of Mind, a guide to accessing the flow state through mastery of your chosen craft by Jax Pax.